It was a game of two halves at the Emirates in what was arguably the biggest match of the season so far. And while Arsenal started the game on top and were able to limit Liverpool in the first half, injuries to key players and a subtle tactical change from slot allowed Liverpool to get the equaliser and leave the match with a point. And in today's video, we're going to be analysing how Arsenal completely dominated Liverpool's midfield in the first half and how one single change from Darwin Nunes allowed Liverpool to finally exploit the space in behind Arsenal's defence. Let's take a look. Welcome to Talk Sport. my name is Cormac, and if you enjoy this new type of analysis, then leave a like and a comment down below. Arsenal came into this match missing a number of key players due to suspension and injuries, and a big talking point was their starting formation, as it featured a number of players in different positions that on paper would allow Liverpool to get the upper hand. In fact, their defensive line had Arsenal fans worried before a ball was even kicked, as Ben White and Gabriel started as the centre-backs, with Timber and Partey as the two full-backs. And these were two positions that Liverpool definitely felt they could have taken advantage of with their wingers in Salah and Diaz. However, Arsenal found a clever way of keeping both wingers quiet for the majority of the match, and this defensive line actually gave them a huge advantage when in possession. Arsenal's objective was to exploit the space on the wings, and to create small overloads with Havertz moving out wide on the right, and either Trossard or Marino moving over to the left to create a 2v1 against the fullbacks. And we instantly saw why this shape was so dangerous with an excellent ball from Ben White into Saka, who effortlessly dribbled past Robertson and put Arsenal 1-0 up. This offensive shape with the two players out wide was very clearly designed to exploit Liverpool's pressing shape. As we've seen all season, Liverpool's defensive shape resembles a 4-2-4, with the two wingers closing off any passes out wide, forcing the opposition to circulate possession or play a long ball where the centre-backs can intercept it. However, especially at the start of this game, Liverpool were not pressing too aggressively, and this gave time to Arsenal to exploit the space either side of Gravenberch and McAllister to move the ball forward, a space that Chelsea were also able to exploit countless times in their game last week. But Arsenal's plan to move the ball out wide also relied on a clever rotation in the centre, and with Partey moving into his more natural holding midfield position alongside Declan Rice, it meant Arsenal would revert to their typical 3-2-5 shape, with an extremely solid defensive block that allowed them to completely dominate the midfield in the first half. In fact, with this build-up shape, Liverpool's press was pretty ineffective in this match, and because they wanted to close down all these players, it created big gaps between the midfield and defensive line that Arsenal were able to exploit before moving the ball out wide into Martinelli or Saka. In contrast to Liverpool who nearly always played long balls into the wingers, Arsenal had the choice of going directly into the wingers or by moving through the units to push more players forward. Ultimately, the only issue for Arsenal in possession proved to be a pretty lacklustre offensive output, with misplaced crosses and Havertz struggling to leave his mark on the game. Now on paper, Arsenal's shape should have given Liverpool's wingers acres of space to exploit on the flanks, but in reality both Salah and Diaz struggled in their individual battles against Partey and Timber. Liverpool have been one of the most direct teams this season, and Slot's style of moving the ball into the wingers quickly has worked for them pretty consistently so far. However, Arsenal clearly did their homework, and were able to limit any dangerous opportunities from this position. In possession, Liverpool started their attacks with one holding midfielder in Gravenberch, with McAllister and Jones moving further forward in the centre, and Alexander-Arnold being much more aggressive and giving support to Salah on the flank. If needed, either one of these players could rotate in the centre to give support and form a double pivot, but Arsenal's 4-4-2 defensive shape meant there was little opportunity to build centrally in this match. Slot is a manager that doesn't want to waste time when in possession, and the vast majority of chances are coming from long balls, either from the centre-backs or from Kelleher straight into the wingers. In previous matches, these passes were much more precise, and Liverpool were able to exploit the space between the lines with players like Jones and Jota rotating to receive the ball in this position. But Arsenal were very clever to not leave these gaps in midfield, and meant that when the wingers received the ball, there were barely any options for them to move the ball and exploit the space on the flanks. This problem was also made worse when considering the role of Darwin Nunes, and in the first half was consistently dropping far off the defensive line, leaving the two centre-backs isolated, but simultaneously not giving any support on the flanks. And whilst this did give Liverpool more numbers in the centre, Arsenal were able to cover these central passes consistently. 
There were countless moments in the first half with Liverpool playing long balls into the wingers, but Arsenal effectively covering all the possible options and consistently winning the second ball. This problem was made worse by the fact that the delivery of these passes was consistently into feet, where Partey and Timber could physically intercept these passes. In the rare occasions where Liverpool were able to play it over these two fullbacks, then they were able to create some more dangerous opportunities. And it was exactly this scenario that led to their equaliser from the corner, with Van Dijk playing the ball into the space behind Partey for Diaz to chase. Arsenal's well-executed game plan paid off for them at the end of the first half, finding the lead once again thanks to a well-worked free-kick routine, with four players starting in an offside position before quickly shuffling back and getting to the ball before any Liverpool defender. An exact pattern that they tried in a previous free-kick, and after a lengthy VAR check, Arsenal went into the break 2-1 up. In the second half, both teams started with a similar game plan, but even more injuries to Arsenal's defensive line gave Liverpool a window of opportunity to get back into the game. In the 50th minute, Gabriel was replaced by Kibio, and a triple substitution from Liverpool allowed them to gain more control of the match. Liverpool were much more dominant in possession, with Arsenal reverting to a much more defensive approach. However, Liverpool still were not able to find the space through, and were getting frustrated with poor delivery and not much movement in the final third. For the vast majority of the second half, the game was played in Arsenal's half, with Liverpool circulating around the box, but rarely making it past the first defender with their deliveries. However, towards the end of the game, a very subtle but important change from Darwin Nunes allowed Liverpool to find the equaliser. And while he was consistently dropping deep in the first half trying to receive the ball to feet, he started to attack in behind the defence more consistently, finally creating a few more problems for Arsenal's defensive line and ultimately getting the assist for Salah in the 80th minute. Liverpool quickly pushed forward after regaining the ball, and an excellent pass from Trent Alexander-Arnold caught the defensive line not ready to run back to cover the space, with Nunes then finding Salah in the centre. In the end, this clash between Arsenal and Liverpool was decided by the individual battles on the pitch. Saka was in complete control against Andy Robertson, and raises some important questions surrounding his selection in this Liverpool team and Timber and Partey were able to nullify Diaz and Salah for the vast majority of the match, but injuries and players out of position gave Liverpool an opportunity to get back into the game. And this match gave us some important details surrounding both Liverpool and Arsenal. On one hand, whilst Liverpool might not play the most entertaining football, all it takes is a split second of brilliance for them to create a dangerous opportunity. On the other hand, Arsenal have shown us that even when they're missing a number of key players, Arteta has the right ideas to counter the opposition and be dangerous going forward. But what did you think of this match? Do you think either Arsenal or Liverpool deserve to get more out of this game? Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, I have countless of tactical breakdowns on my channel, Football Meta. So if you want to be up to date with the latest tactical trends and up and coming managers, then make sure to check out some of my most recent videos. Thanks for watching.